Hi everybody, my name is Esfer and I am the project administrator and lead charter for the Rock Band Harmonies project. And I'm hopefully here going to be giving you a nice video tutorial on how to use uh, the project or at least how to get it running in your game. Um, the steps you will see in here may vary ever so slightly from configuration to configuration, partially because not everybody has the same setup, not everybody has the same hardware, different people have different USB keys, there's a whole host of things. But this is the, the general process and will hopefully give you an idea as to what to do, especially when we pair it with the existing uh, documentation. Now, I will say that this tutorial is going to be running with a couple of assumptions. Uh, first and foremost, that you have already gone through the kind of initial configuration steps required to set up um, Title Update 4 or Title Update 5, depending on whichever one you're using on both of your USB sticks. If people are still having a problem with that, most of that process is covered under the uh, C3 Customs tutorial, which if I remember, I will try to put a, a link to or an annotation to here in the video. But if it's still a problem for people, I'll try to take a look at setting that up a little later. So to start off, uh, the first thing we want to do with this is visit the Harmonies Project spreadsheet, which I'm sure you all know as tiny.cc slash rbharmonies. Uh, you can get to it through the thread. Again, I'll throw an annotation up. And we're going to look to see about downloading the files. The spreadsheet um, really is, a, is actually a spreadsheet, and a lot of people seem to have trouble identifying where the download links are located. Uh, if you'll notice at the bottom, much like you would see in Excel or OpenOffice or any other spreadsheet application, we have a wonderful series of like 750,000 tabs because I didn't really plan it out before I started plugging things in there. So it's a little all over the place and disorganized. But the tab we want to hit is the fourth one in, which is titled Downloads. This is going to bring you to a tab that has all of the different files related to the project, many of which way down here at the bottom are probably quite out of date because I haven't exactly been maintaining the how-tos to, to author or contribute. Most of that functionality has also been taken over on the C3N. So if you're trying to get started at the most basic level, you actually only need three files. Uh, we need to download the custom packager here at the top, which is the very first link. Beneath that is the installation guide, which is the written version of essentially what you're going to see in the video. I haven't updated it in about a year and a half, so maybe there's a lot of stuff in there that's not quite uh, eloquently written, but that'll go over kind of the text version of everything. And then a little further down, uh, if you go into the resources section, you'll find a link to Party Buffalo. Party Buffalo is the tool that we're going to use to actually put things onto our removable storage devices so that we can throw them into the game. There are a number of different editors out there. Some people prefer uh, Horizon. Some people prefer Modio. I've used Party Buffalo. I've never had a problem with it. There are some issues with it, but fortunately, my workflow never runs into them. So just essentially substitute the steps that you're going to see for Party Buffalo for the Xbox 360 file management utility of your choice. Uh, in addition to those three files, of course, the file you're going to be downloading release to release uh, is going to be, in most cases, just the master package. I do have some more granular options for people that want those available to them. Uh, I don't really ever use them, but they're useful for people that are looking to bundle or who maybe don't have certain disks and want to avoid having those files kind of in their file system in case they do eventually cause a conflict. Uh, the prefabricated cache stuff, that's also self-explanatory in the documentation, and I do apologize to everyone who likes those because I've really been lazy when it comes to putting them together, and I'm gonna try to get a little better for that, but we are not gonna cover that within the scope of this video. Um, I, just as a note too, I'm gonna try to see if I can fit it all into one video, but I'm kind of flying blind first time running this software, so I don't know how easily it's gonna be for me to edit the two parts together, so you might get a part one and a part two. Uh, we'll figure that out once I get to that point. So with the files downloaded, I went ahead and pre-downloaded them. Save yourselves like 40 seconds. Uh, you can create a folder. I'm going to do it on my desktop in this case that is going to contain all of the Rock Band Harmonies Project related files. So I just named it RBHB. You can name it whatever the hell you want. It really does not matter. Into this folder, the first thing we want to do is bring over the custom packager application. So you can copy, paste, drag, and drop. And then I will just extract it here. By the way, these are all RAR files, so you're going to need something like 7-zip or WinRAR to extract them. Um, if you need help with that, you know, email me. I, I don't mind showing you where to get links or going through any of that. Now, by default, the way I've got this bundled, it's going to automatically create the three relevant folders that we need. The first one is a downloads folder. This is where we're going to put everything that we download. Uh, it's kind of like a master repository for all of the Harmonies files. Uh, you can also use it as an input folder, but I keep them separate, just especially on my end where I have to prepare everything for management reasons. The input folder is the location where the files you want to package are going to be placed. 
So if you download the master package but go, well, well, I don't have pro guitar, I don't have a pro bass, I don't need any of those files, you can just leave them out when we move them into the input folder. And then the output folder is quite simply the folder where we're going to drop the, or where the, the packager is going to put the files that we are going to be putting on your USB key. So with the application there, the next step, of course, is to bring over the pack or packs that you have downloaded with upgrade files, or I've downloaded the one. Oops, helps if I click the right things here. I'm going to drop it into this folder, and I'm just going to extract it here. I probably should have just put it right in downloads, but hey, that's not how I roll. So essentially what I'm going to want to do is take the files that are in this archive file and drop them into my downloads folder. Uh, Lego Rock Band's going to get in the way. Okay, let's pretend I did that a little more elegantly. You can just go ahead and drop the archive right into your downloads folder and extract it there. So now we have all of our source files in the downloads folder. Uh, what we're going to do at this point is go in and take everything that we want, and we're going to actually drop it into, you know what, let me do it this way here, just for a second. We're going to take everything that we actually want to incorporate into the uploads, and we're going to put it into the input folder. Now, I know this, this is a, a part of the process that seems to kind of gum people up from one, you know, or from time to time. Um, the optional upgrades folder contains all of the upgrades that are considered non-standard, which is to say they are not Harmony's upgrades and they are not Pro Drums upgrades. Uh, they're incorporated in the project because there are things we found ways to do that we like to have there, but sometimes they have their own caveats, like animation issues. So they're kind of not considered part of the core upgrade project. Uh, the file structure might be a little confusing, but I'll show you exactly what you need to do to get them in there. Essentially, you just want to drop them on top of whatever files you have and let them overwrite them. That's all there is to it. So in this case, I want everything that we've released because I have everything that we've released. So I'm going to take every folder here from the downloads directory, except optional upgrades. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it into the input folder. We'll let it do its thing here. Now, beyond that, I also want to grab some of these optional upgrades. And for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm only going to grab the keys upgrades. Uh, you essentially just repeat the process for anything you want. It gets a little messy when you have a song where, say, I've done keys and pro guitar, and I'm trying to find a better way to deal with that. But for now, this is essentially all we have to do. So if I want the keys upgrades, I just go into the keys folder. You're going to notice that the folders are named similarly to the source folders that we had in the original downloads directory. All you do to drop these upgrades in is select the ones you want. So again, I'm going to select everything and then just paste it over top of the other folder and tell it, yes, I want to overwrite everything that's in there. The reason we're doing this is because everything that is included in the base upgrade is included in the optional upgrade. So all of these keys upgrades also contain the harmony information. So we just replace the originals with these upgrade files and that gives us what we want. That's actually all there is to getting the packages ready for use. So with that said and done, we're gonna drop right back into the root directory and we're gonna run the packager utility to try and package these files. If you open up the packager, very simple interface, you have an input folder and a down, or an output folder, destination folder. By default, those are configured to look for an input and out fol output folder in the folder where the application is run. So as noted, when we create the archive, or when we extract the archive, it automatically creates those folders for us to save us a little bit of time. And then all you need to do is click the Build Packages button and just let it run. It's essentially going to iterate through every folder in the input directory. It's going to pull the upgrade information. It's going to bundle it all together, and it's going to get you two nice ready-to-go packages for when all is said and done. You will notice some warnings as you go through part of the process. This is because we have catches in there to give you a heads up if you're looking at certain types of upgrades because they are missing files that other upgrades will have. So for example, a pro guitar upgrade or a pro bass upgrade does not have a songs metadata file because it's not needed. Uh, if you look at a pro drum upgrade, it also does not have one because it's not needed. And if we look at something that's just fixing the metadata for a song, for example, the uh, Iron Maiden album information fixes, those won't have a MIDI file or an upgrades file because they're not needed. So we'll put up a bunch of warnings if you ever notice that the package you're trying to load in game does not work, I've tested these several times before I release them, so it's possible a file could have gotten mis or misplaced in the archives 
skim through the log, see what it's saying, maybe for the song in question, or if it's just crashing on load, get the whole thing. You can put it in a clip, in a text file rather, um, and then send it to me via an email and I can take a look and see if maybe there's a specific file causing problems. Okay, so now we have everything packaged. If you look in the output folder, we have two files, a smaller dummy file and a larger upgrade file. This is key for the part of the process that is going to involve the Xbox. Uh, and I, a lot of the problems that I get reports on seem to come from people either not deleting the dummy file, uh, deleting it at the wrong time, or deleting both files. So as we get to that point in the video, I will run through what we need to delete and what we need to look for to make sure the right files are getting cleared out. So with this done, the next step is going to be to get Party Buffalo extracted. Now, as a matter of course, I also just put this right in the same folder as the packager. I keep it all in one spot. No reason to get complicated. I'm going to extract it here. We have a Party Buffalo executable. If you double click on this file, it's going to open the Party Buffalo window. Slowly but surely. Okay. Probably should have tested to make sure I had all of the prerequisites, but I'm pretty sure I do. Okay, so with this running, we're going to open a drive. It should, oh, by the way, this is the point where you need to have your USB device already formatted for use in the Xbox and have it plugged into your PC. Uh, if you do not know how to format it, Microsoft has a guide on their site. Uh, again, if you need help with it, you can also draw me an email and I can walk through it with you. It's pretty straightforward. You can also format only a part of it if you have a large drive, so you can use some of it for normal content, some of it for rock band content. I actually have one of my drives set up for that with Reaper on it, so I can take it to work, work on it, put the files on, test it, the whole kit. Anyway, uh, I'm getting off topic here. So we just select the drive to open it. And this might be a little slower on this machine because I don't know if it has all USB 2 ports, but we'll test it out. Uh, we want to navigate to the data content, packet of zeros, Rock Band 3, saved game folder. Now, if you do not have this folder already in your drive, um, what you can do is turn on your console uh, with it plugged in and say copy over a song cache file or, or something. Uh, like your options or even your user. Well, I guess the user data side of the profile. So the song cache is a global file. If you copy it to your USB stick using the Xbox's interface, it will create this folder structure. If it's not there, you do have the option to go through and manually create using the options there. You know, new known folders, static cell folders, the options are all there. Uh, all of the games follow a similar layout, so you can kind of drill down and do it. But if you're having trouble with it, if, if this part isn't really clear, uh, again, by all means, feel free to drop me a note and we'll take a look at it. You will note actually before I dive into it in my installer folder, I have title update 4. Make sure this is showing up and matches the title update you currently have on your Xbox. If you don't have it in both places, again, reread the paper guide or give me a shout because you need a copy of this on your USB stick and also on the hard drive that you're using for the project. So what we want to do is go into the save game folder. Uh, I'm going to delete the package I had here from last minute testing last night. Pretend you didn't see that. And I'm also going to delete the song cache because we do not want those files there. If you have an existing song cache, either there or anywhere else in your Xbox, and you try to load the upgrades, it will not overwrite the data that already exists for the songs. And by default, the game is going to say that every song that did not come after Rock Band 3 and have harmony information in it has one or zero parts. So it will not show up. It'll act as though you didn't even put the upgrades in. So with the cache deleted, all we're going to do is drag and drop both the dummy and upgrade files. Oh, don't do this to me. Okay, I forgot Windows 7 doesn't seem to do it the same way as Windows XP. So we're actually going to navigate to it and inject it this way. There we go. And then all we need to do is close the drive. Patiently wait for it to close the drive, close Party Buffalo, and then we are ready to move on to phase two of the project, which involves getting everything up and running on the Xbox. So I'm going to end the recording of this first part of the video now, and then we're going to move on to that part of it. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to run the two together. If I can, I'm going to completely erase this section with me rambling, and we'll just move on to the Xbox part of things. 
I, if it ends up being two videos, thanks for sticking with us, and hopefully the second part will be a little quicker. Thanks. Bye.